Here's a neat trick you could do when you replace the image of your cursor. First, my original recording. And if we go in and we click on it, my mouse pointer is just all over the place. And I go ahead and I click on my second item right there. And again, my mouse pointer is just all over the place. And I click on my mouse pointer here. And I want to go ahead and look at this right here. I'm going to pause for a second. Notice how that mouse pointer is no longer the arrow. It's that four-headed arrow. So they're not the regular arrow. That will be important later. So I'm going to go continue. And again, my mouse is just crazy. And this time when I change things, my mouse is not changing. It stays, it stays the same cursor. That will be important to remember later on. Let's look at the second one, what I've done. All I've done is I've come in and I've told the click effect to be inverted and I've changed to a different pointer, red arrow huge. That's one of the ones that are on my website. Of course, you could use any image you want. I suggest PNGs, they work real well, they're transparent. You could use one of mine, use one of yours. So now when I do this, one, you could see when I'm clicking, but you still, of course, see when things are just crazy and where I'm moving around, things just don't look right. Here I will go to the star and I will click on it. And now we don't even get that four-headed arrow because I've told it to replace the image. Well, that's not quite right. I click here and that one looks a little bit better. Again, the image doesn't have to change. But let's see if we can make things a little bit better with this. So here I have the exact same setup as I had before. It's inverted, it's red arrow. But I'm going to go through and find where does it go crazy? Right about there. So I'm going to move to right before it goes crazy. I will go to my media tab and in there I've already put my red arrow huge and I will come down through here and I will plop that right in the timeline where I want it and I will drag it up right to where it goes and by the end of that clip we'll go ahead and we can see where things are crazy I'm moving around we'll want to hide that cursor but it goes to where it goes to right there happens to be the exact length of that clip. That's coincidence, I assure you. But if need be, I could always shrink or grow that clip. I now could add a video action, add video action, and move my cursor over right to where I want. It's actually not the cursor, move that image right to where that should be. I'm going to zoom in on my timeline here. And let's make this action a little smoother. I'm going to go and stretch out my video action some. And now let's go ahead and look at that little clip. Now we're going to see the cursor twice. One is the actual cursor, one is that image. The crazy one is right there, but the smooth one moves over, going right to the right spot. So we want to get rid of the real cursor for that point. So I will click on my clip. I will go back to my screen recording properties. I will add the screen recording property and say, don't even show the mouse pointer. That's not going to quite work for me though, because that screen recording property starts a little too early. It starts it before where I had clicked. So notice my mouse pointer disappears there for a second. No harm, just pick this up and click it to right there. They both are lined up. And now when I watch that, you don't even see where one disappears where one comes back, but it moves smoothly over there. And then it disappears again because my image is gone. I have to go right here at another screen recording property and say, show the mouse pointer. Now when I play that part, you can't tell where I replaced it. Now I've done this more completely in a fourth copy. So here's my fourth copy. Same idea. I did the same thing that we just talked about. There's only going to be one difference, but let's just go ahead and look to see what that looks like. It goes ahead. I've made it so that the movement is nice and smooth as it goes to the third item. But here's where we're going to want to do something a little different. Notice right there, I have my four-headed arrow. So how did I do that? I had to come down here and I had to add another screen recording property to set the pointer to be default. I don't want it to be the red arrow for now. I want it to be default. And I had to do one other thing. If you have the curve type default, look what happens. When I have that set up, you could see that arrow growing, that four headed arrow growing. Let's do that one more time. Doesn't look quite right. If I click into here and say curve type none, it will take effect right at the very beginning of that transition right at the beginning of that action and then boom it's now doing it just as we'd want and we go ahead it moves over smoothly I didn't have to do the same little trick there but using that little trick right there of using the image and the cursor the same image to replace the cursor you can now create nice smooth motion instead of that craziness we saw at the beginning.